Angular 16 was already released 4 months ago, and quite often on the interviews you can hear questions, what do you know about latest Angular versions, what changes do we have there? And it is a great question, because it shows if a person knows how framework is evolving and what new features we are getting. So in this video I want to share with you most important features that we got from Angular 16. So here I am on the official website, and the most important feature of Angular 16 is for sure Angular Signals. As you can see here, Angular Signals is in developer preview, and we got from there several methods like signal, computed, and effect. I already made a video about Angular Signal, but just to remind you, inside our component we can create a signal with the word signal, we can then render it inside our HTML just with round brackets. And we can later update our signal by using, for example, this user set or this user update, where we're getting our previous users and we're returning a new value, or this users mutate, where we just mutate our existing data. Additionally, we got a possibility with the usage of computed to create new signals based on the old ones. And also, we are getting effects, and they allow us to trigger some changes after specific signal was changed. And signals are extremely important for performance, because they are working outside of digest cycle. If you don't know, inside Angular we have a digest cycle, and with every single change, Angular doesn't really know what we changed, it re-renders the whole application from top to bottom. This is not efficient, this is why we got signals, but here you must be cautious, because this is a developer preview. Yes, you can try them, you can use them inside your application, but you must be aware that API of signals can be changed later. But I don't really think that signals will be completely removed from Angular, as they are quite awesome. The next important feature is Enhanced Hydration Developer Preview. What does it mean? If we are rendering our Angular application on the server, we have just a single render of markup on the server, and then the whole client application completely removed that markup and build it again. It is not like this anymore, now Angular is using its markup, which was built on the server, to render client markup and change it later. Essentially, we don't need to do anything, we don't need to update our projects, if you are using Angular with server-side rendering, it will just be updated and it will work like this, out of the box. Another important feature is developer preview of ESBuild and Vid, and as you can see here, Angular CLI now have possibility to use ESBuild, so our building time is much faster. And if you don't know, ESBuild is extremely popular tool to build different languages and frameworks. Also, as you can see, they are looking in integration with Vid, and I already made a video regarding Vid, and I highly recommend you if you want to generate some web server and project for plain JavaScript, TypeScript, or React to use Vid. It is extremely fast and efficient solution in comparison to create React app, for example. And now inside Angular we also will get something similar. But for now we can use just ESBuild, and the only change that we need to do is this build Angular browser ESBuild, which actually means we must open Angular JSON file, and here we have architect build builder. And as you can see here, I have build Angular browser. But now here we can use browser-esbuild. So I am writing here browser ESBuild, and I am good to go. But again, this is an experimental developer preview. Another important feature is related to scaffolding of standalone application, which actually means when we are generating an application with NGNU, we can write now minus minus standalone, and it will generate for us not an application with the modules, but just standalone version only with components. For this we can write NGNU standalone if we are using Angular 16. But I really like to use it through NPX, because I can easily switch between different Angular versions. And now I am writing NPX minus P, Angular CLI 16, this is exactly the version that I can easily change here, NGNU, the name of the project, minus minus standalone. I am selecting here that I need routing, and I want to select CSS, and our application is created. Let's have a look. Here inside source we have main.ts, and inside main.ts we have a new version, which is using bootstrap application, and we are providing inside app component and app config. What we have here inside our app is app component, this is just normal app component, but we have here standalone true. 
We also don't have here our app module, it is completely obsolete now, but we have two new things, we have app config and app routes. Inside the routes we have all routes for our application, because we selected that our Angular needs routing. And here we have an app config, this is exactly what we are throwing inside main.ts. So here inside, as a second parameter, we have app config. And typically we are providing here lots of different stuff to configure our application. This is the new place, which previously was inside app module. And in our case here, we are providing just a router here. We are writing provide router, and inside we are throwing our routes. So now you can use this command to scaffold the whole application. Another important feature is required inputs, and I already made a video about it. It allows us to mark our inputs as required, and we will directly get TypeScript error if we didn't provide an input in the component. One thing which is important to remember, Angular 16 requires Node, at least version 16 or 18. I highly recommend you to switch to Node 18 if you didn't do it yet. And here we have several deprecations, and the most important is that class injection token router guards and resolvers is being replaced with functional guards and resolvers. So previously we wrote our guards like this, as a class outguard service for example, and we must create here can activate function. Now this method is deprecated, and we are writing our guard instead as a function. As you can see here, outguard is exactly the same guard, but now we are injecting our dependencies with word inject, and we must return here an observable with boolean, just like we did previously inside our class. This is extremely important to refactor in your code, because this feature is deprecated. And actually, if you are interested to learn how you can lazy load your standalone components, make sure to check this video also.